Yes. Can't remember, I'm a really professional here, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, so, what I normally do is, the first thing I do, to the people that have been on before and the people that are going to be on, I'm going to always ask people uh, how we know each other, how did we meet, but you're the unusual, because I've known you, I, well, I was trying to think, I, I've known you, I think, since I was about 16. Uh-huh, I think so, I. Right, I would have been but about do you remember how we actually met? Probably through a mutual friend, Chris. But it's my first. I think you were I, in a I band. Don't actually, I don't actually right. remember meeting you. I think you were in a band with Chris, and I wasn't in the band at this time. Defect, because it was Flemmy that was on bass, and yeah. I remember it was a Friday because I used to work Sunday to Thursday. I was off on a Friday, and Chris said, "The two guys that play guitar in my band are in a talent contest at Denny High. Are you coming <laughs> along?" So right, we came okay. along, and I think that was probably the first time I met you was at the old Denny High. Really? Aye. That's my first memory of meeting you. If it wasn't there, it was the engine room. I just assumed it must have been the engine room. I didn't I Aye, don't remember. No, no. remember I got tricked into doing that, by the way. Because <laughs> who was it? It was you and... Jonathan McKeith. John, Johnny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny McKeith. And, and you know what? I've never seen him. I've never seen Johnny since high school. Right, okay. He's a he's a nice enough ah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what I don't know what happened to him. Ah, because he was in defect. Because Flemmy was on. So what base. happened was, I, do you remember Toy, uh-huh. the band ah, Toy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. me and Grant, the drummer, and uh, Martin, the bass player, were friends since we were like really wee. And um, when we were about twelve, me and Grant, Grant got a drum kit. I had my guitar, so we we started. We started like, or we'll make a band, started like kind of jamming. And right. there was a, in High Bonnie Bridge, it's called The Bunker now, mm-hmm. like the rehearsal um, yeah, yeah. place. Uh, yeah, yeah. But years before that, it was called M&M Studios. The two guys, their surnames started with a letter oh, M. Oh, I remember it was M&M. Um, yeah, I can't yeah. remember their names. John John and Alec, I think. Aye, something. something or other. But it used to, where it is the now, it used to actually be at the building right along at the very end. Mm-hmm. And then it moved, and then it eventually became the bunker when we bought it over. But um, it was like a Friday night where it was dead because everybody's out at the pub. Oh <laughs> so uh, my dad had went up and he was like, "Right, I've got two boys are like twelve, so it was like we're just paying it with our pocket money." So he was just like, got done done some sort of deal where they gave us it for half price. And uh, so we started jamming, me and Grant, and then we brought in we, well, we need a bass player, so we brought in Martin Miller. Mm-hmm. Uh, who I'd known for years and years, and uh, sorry, before Martin Grant was at school with Jason, mm-hmm. so we got like Jason in, so it was the two guitarists and the drums, and then I got Martin in, right, and then Martin was like, oh, I know a singer, and he got Gav Marshall in, right, okay, so it was the five of us, and then I don't know, maybe I was either crap on guitar at that point, <laughs> or they just may they were kind of. Maybe they just wanted the sound that they were going for. They didn't need two guitarists because they were more like your corn ah, yeah, kind of sound. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Whereas I was playing stuff that was more like rhythm guitar, lead guitar. Uh, you were so, more kind of sepultura. So they, were a, they were a bit like, yeah. nah, we don't need you, so you get, get lost. <laughs> so uh, I got booted. And, uh, and were they toy at this point? No, no it was just pre-toy. We'd, only, we'd done one gig, Brilliant. but I don't <laughs> think we even had a name at the time. And just as they booted me, I think they kind of said to Jason's dad, Jim, like managers or, or something kind of along uh-huh. those lines. And then I didn't really know much about what happened because I kind of like fell out with them and all that sort of nonsense. But they obviously got the name and and uh, what happened was there used to be a, do you remember, there used to be a paper called the Ad Trader. Uh-huh. Right, yeah. And during the week it was blue, and then at the weekend it was it was printed yellow. in yellow, yellow for some uh, yeah, reason. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it would yep. be like you'd go up to M for music or musicians, uh-huh. and it'd be like guitarist looking for other guitarists to form a band or something like that. So I'd put like an ad out, and Peter Flett, uh-huh. who had uh, messaged me about starting a band, Peter's about the same age as me, so I was like, yeah, yeah. that's good. And then I'd said to I was at school with Johnny McCraith, so I'd said to Johnny, and so there was the three of us, but Johnny had then played in a band previously with Chris. 
Right, okay. So that's how Chris got involved. So it was right. the four of us to start. So, so Chris was playing bass and singing. That's right, yeah. But yeah, then yeah. I think he was like, I just want to sing. So I knew Fleming. Mm -hmm. So I got Fleming in to play the bass. So there was like the five of us. And he kind of like started practicing. Aye. And then uh, we got our first gig. And it was at the Martel. It was a battle of the bands. Uh -huh. And I would have been there. I think, um, well, well, Grant and all that, like, talk, I don't think they were playing, but they were uh -huh. definitely there. They were there. But I think I'd been the night, I'd, I'd been maybe the week before, because I think they were, I'd seen them playing, that's the first time I'd uh -huh. seen them. Well, they know they were the week before, and it was, because little were, remember Little Joe Crow? Yeah. I, I think they were playing as well, because he used to always have the Battle of the Bands, and it ran over three or four weeks, if I remember rightly. So it was a guy so, called, it was a guy called Lee. From a band called Jester. Oh, I, I yeah, the, the I, I, I actually, auditioned for them. So he uh -huh. he arranged yeah, yeah. the Battle of the Bands, and they must have got in contact with Chris. Uh huh. And uh, Chris, had, That's right. I don't know if Chris had said, "Can we? You know, we're looking for, we're looking for three bands. Can our band be one?" He's like, "Yeah, you can open." Sort of thing. So that was our first gig. Right. Okay. But Grant and all that were there, but I don't know. They must have just been there to watch. Uh -huh. But I hadn't really like spoke to them and that for a while, so it was funny because when I when I think back now, I'd left the band. I wasn't that good a guitarist. But I'd obviously then spent like a year or two years like practicing because I was like doing all these crazy solos and stuff. Because <laughs> I can remember Grant being like, "Oh my God!" I was like, "You can actually solo now." But uh, I was like, "I don't, I don't, I still don't remember you being there." But obviously, that was when the engine room and Falkirk kind of started the out. Was where the so I just assumed. Was that I must have got to know you through you going there. Aye, I think we did because it was every Friday night we were there, wasn't it? So, but and no, then, I remember because I remember my first ever gig with Effect turned out to be the cat, eh, King Tuts, and it was, was like it? it was, and it was like a week before, and something had happened, and I remember Chris came at my door and he was like, "I need a bass player. You play bass. Fancy playing bass? What's happened to Flemmy? Well, I can't I, remember what well, had happened, but I my first ever live performance. I I, I can't. With Effect, I can't remember King now Tuts. what happened. With Fleming, because Fleming, I don't think it was in But bad. Fleming, in my memory, did he not join another band? Well, Fleming, in my memory, he wasn't a bass player. Fleming was a, he was a really good guitarist. Mm -hmm. So I think he, I don't know if he'd maybe just picked up the bass because I'd asked him to do it because uh, yeah. he needed a bass player uh -huh. and he wanted to play gigs and play in a band. But I know him and Chris, I think clashed uh, quite a bit. Strong and, personalities. And eh? Probably <laughs> Fleming was like, "This is crap. I don't want to do this." <laughs> um, but I remember one time we actually played a gig in Bonesse at the, it was in the high school gymnasium. Oh, right, was, okay. that, was that a separate building to there the rest of it or I, something? Oh, yeah, yeah, because I think I, did I play in that? Were you? No. Yeah, so there was two no, buildings. No. Bonesse Academy had two buildings, your old building Because Fleming building. was there because, uh -huh. because, because he turned up and I was like, where's your bass? I thought you had it. Why would I have your bass? I think he'd left it at the practice place, but I was like, well, why would I have your bass? And, um, Aye, because I think I did one of those shows at Bonus Academy as well, but I was on drums at the time. I and all I remember was drummer. it was being on stage, so it was just an echo. Aye. It was a big gymnasium, echo, mm -hmm. on stage, couldn't hear a single thing, and every person had their, their 90s guitar pedal, zoom pedal, uh -huh. with the really bad distortion. Yep. And uh, I just all you could hear was like drums and, and somebody can. screaming. <laughs> <laughs> if I remember right, like this, the sound engineer was like a fireman that owned like speakers, a PA, and that was it. <laughs> I didn't know that King Tuts was your first gig with ah, us. Yeah, yeah. That was my first gig with Efe, it was King Tuts. See, I, I, I didn't remember yeah, that, but it was, a good, it was a good gig though. It was, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And see, before you came here, I was trying to find, I do have, still have pictures of it, because I was going to show you them, but I don't have it. Aye, but that was, Aye, so was yeah, that was, that, that's the first time I can remember meeting you, but I think it was probably like the engine room and defect that we properly became pals. So see, um, when you were growing up, what, how did you get into music? Was your mum or dad? It was my dad, yeah, he was into... What stuff did he oh, listen to? I suppose the heaviest thing my dad was into was uh, Queen. So that kind of got me it's off the Brian one. May stuff and like, listening to John Deacon. And that's so, where I first kind of got that niggle in the back of my mind going... The bass is more than just a root note. There's like stuff going on behind the guitar, and it's actually put an integral part of it. And, and then, so you, that's kind of the same as most people. They're in the car, and their dad's Aye. putting on tape back cassettes back then, and uh, putting music and stuff. So, were you kind of similar? Like when you kind of get to school and your friends and that, you then you then develop your own taste. Aye, and yeah, you yeah. Discover Aye. your friends let you discover it was actually music. before that. So. 
I remember being five, six year old, so my family were from Kelso, so I used to go on like summer holidays, Easter holidays, October holidays, and I had an older cousin, still do Jeff, and I used to go into his room and there was just wall to wall posters, all these metal bands, like it was like Beneath the Remains by Sepultura and Maiden, Guns N' Roses had just yeah. come out and yeah. I used to go down and I used to go down with like blank tapes and come back with like albums and albums yeah. of stuff. Because I remember um, just... my uncle was in, he's at, he liked ACDC and he had like Iron Maiden and stuff and he gave me a, this was when I was about maybe nine or ten, he gave me a, a copy of Iron Maiden's Fear of the Dark mm. and I didn't like it. Uh-huh. It did the album. <coughs> because before Aye. that I was just listening to the stuff that you're kind of brought up on and like you know it was like my dad listened to like U2 and all that sort of mm, stuff so I, it was kind of more like that kind yeah. of stuff and uh, I didn't he said oh try this put it in didn't like it and then when I was about 10 well maybe about a year later Martin Miller came down mm-hmm. to the house come, uh, and he had a cassette tape and he's like put this in and it was Master of Puppets album. <laughs> and I was just like, I don't know what this is, but I really <laughs> love it. And then obviously later on I then discovered, quite soon after discovered Iron Maiden, kind of Aye, the yeah. whole thing started and that. But um, how, so was it, how did, did you play any other instruments before bass? Because I've only so, ever known you to play Aye. bass. So piano and keyboard is where I started. So I did piano lessons kind of from, I had a keyboard when I was wee. And then I got like my big fancy keyboard. Is that the, the same keyboard from Argos that everybody got? I think had? it was either little one that played like the, the bossa nova and everything. And I had the wee drum kit. I had a good uh, wee demo tune of it. <laughs> and the wee drum kit, like the wee five pad cursor for your drum kit yeah. in the corner. And, and then like, I got a bigger one, like, and that's when I started doing. You just pushed the demo. Look what I'm doing. Look at me, man. I know. I so started off with kind of piano and keyboards. And then guitar, because like, so my dad was, he was a guitarist. But, um, but, but did you, senior thing you started off, was it just playing about or did I, you get lessons? No, I got piano lessons, so I got up to grade two on piano. And was that, that wasn't, was that out, outside school, so it was like kind of private? Nah, it was kind of in school, right. it was kind of, that was probably maybe That's first year. That's primary school or first year at high school? First year at high school. And then, so you're about 11, 12? Aye, that's when I kind of got first proper, and then I came at third year and I took standard grade music. Mm-hmm. So piano was my instrument, and you've got but, a second instrument. which I picked guitar, and then it was like you were saying, oh, we needed a bass player, so actually I wasn't very good at guitar, and I've got stubby little fingers, eh? so it was like... And there's uh, two less strings. And there's two less strings to concentrate, <laughs> I've upgraded a five-string bass, I'm nearly yeah. on a six-string, I'm getting there. Uh, so aye, it was just one of those, you play bass, so you reckon and I you picked it up, and I just enjoyed it more. About 15, 16, when you picked the bass up? Aye, yeah, yeah. So when, so it was probably so when first you started, year I got my first so bass, you started well. jamming... With us, you probably were only playing bass for two or three years by that point, if oh, you were about aye. maybe 18, so, 19. Third year, I left as sixth year, so aye, it's probably like, aye, maybe four or five years, yeah, yeah top, four That's years, funny top, that, mental. I just assumed you'd always play bass. <laughs> no, 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 late to the game, but I always had that interest in it, like I loved like, watching like funk bass and slap and pop and the sound of it. So see the bass. Go back to keyboard, I love the slap bass sound. Yeah, <laughs> so see the bass though, did you go to lessons for that or did, was that just Briefly, purely... six months I went to a guy in Bowness that all my mates seemed to go to. Um, and Robin. did it just teach you the very basics? Aye, it was just kind of good habits. Like, because I kind of taught myself by year so, kind of playing along with Maiden, playing along with Metallica. The other thing so, I say to people like our age is it was difficult back in the 90s because, see now, you just go onto YouTube, how do you learn to play play this song? And there's oh, a million there's lessons. There's apps, there's, Whereas back uh, then it was like, see even trying to find, um, see trying to find music books, because uh-huh. you couldn't obviously go online to order it. So you, you had to find a music shop mm-hmm. that sold actual music books, books. And you had to hope that the book you wanted was actually in there. Uh-huh. And then you had to hope that there was maybe tab down the bottom. Because uh-huh. if you didn't read music, then you were, you were struggling. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And there was like, what, one music shop in Falkirk, Music City? And all that place. Yeah. Why? But Remember yeah. then you used to go in and they maybe have like one kind of rock metal book, and it was just like, oh. and or, if it wasn't or, that, or you start a band and then you just start to learn little bits from like your pal show your wee guitar riff, aye. and you'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. I'll learn that. And do you I remember a guy showing me the bass solo for a rhyming ancient man on the music room, Bonus Academy, and I was like blown away because it sounded mental, it sounded hard. And he sat and he just showed me and he was like, oh, you're doing is this note on this string and then you're just doing that. And just yep. and as soon as I saw it, so I started picking up wee bits off him and then just randomly. So do you, do you remember any of the 
like when you first kind of got into the bass, like what was some of the first songs that you remember, or first riffs that you remember? Because there's always like everybody probably does oh. smoke on the water Aye, at yeah, some yeah. point, and back probably if you're in the nineties, you've probably learned. The uh, and you, and you like rock music, <laughs> uh-huh. you probably learn Basket Case by Green Day. Yeah, 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 you probably yeah. learn Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana, uh-huh. Inner Sandman by Metallica, yep. and Smoke in the Water oh. is just a sort of standard. And the chain, was it the Grand Prix song it was at the time? Dun, 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 but I always remember, I picked up the guitar and I can remember uh, like, even just holding it, you're like, this, this feels weird. Because uh-huh. I never, I just want, I wanted a like, guitar, I wanted to learn to play it. I had no idea where to start. My mum and dad. My dad liked music, he didn't play anything, any mm-hmm. instruments though. And I can remember my friend, well, if you do the low E and then you can do, he showed me nothing else matters. It's just open <laughs> strings. <laughs> and, you're, yep. and you're just like, this actually sounds like the thing I'm listening to. That, this is yeah, crazy. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then I can remember him showing me, well, they do Welcome Home Sanitarium. It's basically the same notes, but you just, <laughs> you're picking harmonics. <laughs> and I'm like, this is amazing. And then, uh, and yeah. then he showed me like the intro to... Um, Dead Skin Mask by Slayer. Oh, sweet. And I was like, this is amazing. I'm basically the best guitarist ever. I'm, I'm <laughs> growing a mullet right now. <laughs> and I was like, this is great. What about the bass, though? Because I remember Fear of the Dark was an early Iron Maiden uh-huh. one that, that I really liked. And I liked um, oh. the Clairvoyant. Clairvoyant, so yeah. That's probably like, one of the first ones. I remember for, for like months learning that. Uh-huh. And the. Uh, what was the instrumental song that they done? Uh, was it Big Aura for a Power Slave? Mm, no. There was one from, I think it was either the Transylvania. Th- that was it. Transylvania. I remember yeah. learning that uh-huh. and spending. But because I enjoyed the music and enjoyed the guitar, I, I didn't have to get told to sit and learn it. Mm-hmm. So coming home from school and you'd spend hours trying to like just play this one bit over and over and over. So. I suppose that's you know you you like it Aye, if, you, if yeah, you're yeah. not getting forced to sit down yeah, yeah. right you go you are going to learn to play this you want to actually learn to play uh-huh. it much to mum so my dad probably like downstairs like oh my oh, god I wish you'd hurry up and <laughs> learn something else because that song is really irritating me but uh, what was a couple like obviously you're a massive Iron Maiden fan so mm-hmm. what was a couple of like the first songs that that you tried to learn the first one I tried to learn was the Trooper. And it's so difficult because I don't know if people no, realise it's... anyone that doesn't know Iron Maiden uh-huh. probably just think they're noise, uh-huh. like oh they're a rock band that's rubbish. But yep. you probably picked one of the most difficult bass players uh-huh. in rock music yep. to tr- to be like I want to be like him. Uh-huh. I just remember thinking I'm going to learn the trooper. I'm going to learn the trooper. But and did you always? He obviously uh, finger picks. Uh-huh. Lots of bass players that is like like heavy plectrums. Uh-huh. So were you automatically like? I'm just fingers straight fingers, because that's what he straight does. fingers yeah. yeah. He's a pick now and I alternate between the two, but yeah, at the time it was like fingers all the way, fingers all the way. And who got you your first bass? Uh, my dad, I remember getting it for my Christmas, so, so that would have been about third year. So I want a bass, aye, I want a bass. Do you remember what kind it was? It was a Squire Precision. Yeah, what, what happened to it? Still got it. You still in, got it? Still got it. It's in the shed, it's got a neck like a banana, <laughs> but it's in one piece. <laughs> it's still got all the stickers, all the bits of gaffer tape holding it together. But I've still got it, and one day, it. one day it'll, it'll be there. You'll get it fixed. Aye, one day. And what about, so the Trooper was the first one first you tried one I wanted to, learn. to I remember the clairvoyant, that was the first time I felt like, yeah, I could play like Steve Harris, just that intro riff. Yeah. Like, oh, do, do, Killers do, 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 is a good one oh, as well. Killers was a good one, yeah, I remember Killers. Because yeah, it, it starts with just uh-huh. bass guitar, so Aye. you can hear it nice and clearly and try and like figure it out. And then the first one I remember that I felt that sense of, like, I'm a musician, was when I'd learned how to play the kind of middle bit of Rhyming Ancient Mariner, like the slow bit. Yeah. And then it goes into like that solo, where Steve kind of playing the faster bit when it starts to kick back in. I remember my mum walking past my bedroom and kind of walking backwards and staring in and just went, go and play that again. And I just played that for the rest of the night for her because yeah. she was just blown away by it. And that's the first time I felt like, yeah, I want to do So like what's, your f- <laughs> what's your favourite Maiden album and what's your favourite Maiden song if you had to pick just one? <laughs> album, Power Slave. Mm-hmm. Album Power Slave, there's not a shit song on it. Favourite song? Oh, I could pick a favourite song off each album, but I don't know if I've got that. So my, f- my favourite album is Seventh Son. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, just yeah, yeah. 
a couple of years after Power Slave. Uh -huh. Moonchild is my favourite Maiden tune. And it was the kind of second one with synth in it, but it worked better than Somewhere in Time with the synth. It just seemed to... Yeah. And so, it was a concept album, wasn't it? So see, getting into music, right? Do you remember... I don't mean like a Christmas present or it's in your stocking or that... What was... Do you remember the first... The first album you ever went into a shop with your own money and actually bought? Do you remember what it was? Oh... It would have been on cassette and it was probably Maiden. Yeah. And it would have been a... Do you remember where you got it from? Ah, yeah, yeah. John Menzies done in Kelso before it was <laughs> WH Smith's. And it was probably... I always laugh because these shops don't exist anymore. They don't. They don't. No, WH Smith's isn't so even the first place Smith's I went to was, <laughs> was our price. Up, oh, yeah, yeah, Up yeah, yeah. in Cumbernauld. <laughs> and uh, it was a cassette tape as well. Aye. And then obviously eventually they went on to CDs and stuff uh -huh. like that. And then you had Orbit Music and Grangemouth, I remember going there a few times and buying and some sleeves stuff. And sleeves and Falkirk. And then you had your HMV Virgin, that was kind of maybe a wee bit later, later on. on. That's right, aye. And oh, there's always the still Europa Music and Sterling is still there. The first cassette, oh, first album. Well, I remember my brother got Seventh Son and Cassette for Christmas. And I tried to steal it off him when he was having none of that. <laughs> Nobody would fling it at me. Yeah. Uh, so it was probably somewhere in time, would have probably been the first tape that I went and bought. Yeah. I guess that would have been what, 86, 87, and I saved my pocket money up when we're doing that, yeah, yeah. Cutting grass and everything like that. Uh, yeah. I will get that album, if that will be room, mine. If I tidy my room, can I get a lot of 30 pence? It's like that bit from uh, Wayne's World. <laughs> oh, you will be mine. You will be mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, I remember at the start of the summer holidays going in and seeing like. The people are in John Denzies, that guy's back in the shop again, he's been weird. <laughs> <laughs> I remember they had Raising Hell on VHS and I remember going in at the beginning of the summer holidays again that, the one? Uh, that was like Bruce Dickinson's last yeah, show and yeah, I remember yeah. going to had the video and I was like you will be mine, you will be mine and by the end of the summer holidays I saved enough up and they didn't have it in Falkirk because I managed to convince yeah. my mum to go and visit my gran so I could go back to Kelso that day <laughs> to get the video at the end of the summer holidays the first was... CD I ever bought was Made in England right okay um, for like the live concert from uh -huh. 1988 because it came in this big box thing and you had like the actual video of the concert, the VHS video yeah, yeah. of it at the same time. Uh -huh. But it was like, in hindsight, you're like, even now you listen to it and you're like, that is an amazing concert. Aye. But yeah, I yeah, just remember yeah, that being the first CD because I got a free video with it at the same first time. First CD I bought was Live After Death. Because I remember my dad must have got like a macro card. And for my Christmas that year, I got one of those Coke can hi fi's. Do you remember them? It was like oh, a yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a Coke can, you opened it up, and it was the speakers. <laughs> but it was my first CD player that I owned, so I needed a CD to go with it. So like, I bought Live After Death just so I could play a CD. Right, so <laughs> you'd said about, about bands. Obviously, you joined the Amazing Defect yep, yep, yep. from the 90s, uh -huh. which was uh, the band I was in. Yep. Were you in a, a band before that? Nope. So that was your nope. first band? I mean, we mucked about a. Uh, so the same guy that I got lessons through, so he kind of taught all my mates, so there was like, um, Nicky from Little Joe Crow. I remember them, cause, aye. because they played at the engine room a few times. That's right, aye. I remember uh, some of the guys, and was that the one that Paul played? Aye, Paul yeah, yeah, Paul played and, well and as well, was yeah. the singer? Was it uh, the guy with dark hair? I can't remember his name now. And was it Boydie on, on drums? No, or am I no, something? it was. So I did play with I played with Boydie in a band. Oh, I can't remember the name of that one. That was probably for some school thing. Ah, it was a school thing. We opened Winter Sandman, played a metal cover <laughs> of Wannabe by the Spice Girls. I did a bass solo, come off the drums to play a bass solo or something random. Ah, did you do? Uh, oh, I can't remember. It was uh, Nicky on guitar, Daniel on guitar. You had Neil on Neil. bass. that's who it was. That's who I remember. Now. You had... Oh, who was the singer? He, he was actually a good He's singer. He's a bus driver now, aye. Uh, um, he did karaoke contests and I remember. We used to go up and see him in Falkirk. Because oh. I, I, I remember... Deke, Derek. He's aye, he's a bus driver now, so I occasionally see him driving a bus and he'll took the because leave. Because Chris in the band was the only one from Boness. Mm -hmm. And I always remember he didn't get on with certain people mm -hmm. in the band, but... Probably just teenage nonsense, Aye, but, yeah, yeah. but I always uh, remember he was a good singer. But I always remember uh, that I got a, a copy of their, um, their demo, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like four or five original songs, songs yeah. and it was the same in every one. They would start off nice, clean guitar, and then the minute the, then the, the drums distor would the kick distortion, in. <laughs> the drums kicked in, it was just like shh <laughs> for like five minutes, and then you'd be like, right, next track, and it'd be like a few chords, nice sounding, and then just shh. Court jester, that's the only song I remember. And I'm just like, 
interesting fact as well. But then you look when at you go back and listen to our demos, it's like, actually, oh, they're just the same. Or, aye, they're totally the same. We recorded them in a barn. But yeah. if you go back and look at the linear notes that a little Joe Crow CD, you'll see there's a fan club name and address, and it was me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, aye, so the first band was kind of in uh, Nicky and a few other guys, and it was just was, a did you say it was showcase it was up the bonus half town. Covers, home. was there originals? No, so the first ever gig I probably did was it was all covers and then when Robin, our guitar teacher, did the showcase thing at Bowness Town Hall, mm-hmm. you just kind of formed bands with various people and like Nicky was maybe in three bands, I was in one and like we called our band the Felvis isn't dead, let's find him and kill him. And we played in with a short name. Inter Sandman <laughs> and Oh, was it My Friend of Misery as well? We played most no, two songs we played because we played My Friend of Misery and Enter Sandman. And if you not album. love uh, if iPhones were back then so you could watch it back and you realise how terrible it probably Christ, was. Pro- oh, no, aye. There's probably a VHS somewhere as well of that Bonus Academy one where I played drums. Yeah. Greg McMillan's probably still got the VHS of that. He had his mum's camcorder at the time. So did, did but it was you, all cover bands. So did you start any bands or did you just kind of join ones that were pre-existing? Kind of mucked about, you know, like when I got my first bass, like guy yeah. across the road got his first guitar and we started the band Medieval Killers or something. We, because so you joined the band I was in, but then I think you stayed after I even left. That's and right. I think you've changed your name. We became and TVK or you, something. You's, um, yeah. you's done. I remember you've done like another demo uh-huh. because yep. I've got a cassette tape of it somewhere. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, Nihilist it was called. I remember. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. But I don't remember. I don't. I don't. I think it was just. Did you do gigs? Because I, I don't yeah, remember. Because yeah. uh, you've got. I think you've got Paul. We got to Paul the place in. Yes. Yeah, once you left, Paul came in. And we had. But I don't. Who I didn't see, was I didn't see you doing any gigs or that. I we thought did. it was just one guitarist because Rennie. Rennie played guitar in it as well. But he left before me, right? Because I remember Rennie. Rennie left probably just getting bored right. again, and uh, because it was always me and Rennie uh-huh. on the guitars, and we done it. He left, and then we we done a gig at the Cat House, and. The, the professional people that we were, we hadn't decided to practice or anything. Did I play that one? You, you were there. I, I played the right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't until we got up on stage and started to play that it then twigged in my mind, there's bits in these songs that I don't play and, and Rennie plays and I don't know what he's playing. Aye, yeah, yeah. So uh-huh. it wasn't until we started playing in front of a live audience that I was like, Aye, yeah, yeah. I don't actually know. <laughs> There's a, bit comes up, the there's, a, there's a bit comes up here and I don't know what to play and nobody else in the band know, knows what to play and, uh, and that was the last time I played in it uh, yeah, and yeah. I, 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 I just was like, nah, I can't house. be bored with this anymore and, but you've continued for about aye, a year or sure. a year and a half TK? Are we pl- aye. No, because Rennie left think. before me <coughs> Rennie, We definitely played gigs, I'm sure Because Rennie the joined me. the guys in Toy So he did, yeah, yeah, yeah But I don't know how I'm sure, I think we played Engine Room once we played randomly, played some youth club in East Kilbride randomly. We played there. And then. It's quite cringy when you think about it. Aye. We, we just went anywhere for a gig, didn't you? It was just like. It was just the fun And then it was Defect. Remember, we went up to was at our broth one random Saturday night to play a <laughs> showcase that could have led to Tea in the Park. and No, that, that was King Tuts and everything. But I do remember mm. we went away up north one time. And uh, I can remember we were playing in this sort of club type Night thing, thing and it? whilst they were in the middle of playing there was a Hindu <laughs> appeared really and we were in the middle of playing it and a stripper a guy <laughs> stripper <laughs> appeared and we were doing this like hard heavy metal hard rock <laughs> thing and, and there was this guy stripping <laughs> across the other side <laughs> of the pub to like this table of lassies are like <laughs> and, uh, and I can remember standing playing and at one point this guy walked right on and he's like all right, mate, uh, and he just started talking to me like the way drunk people do. I'm like, I haven't never got a plane here. <laughs> yeah, he didn't, he didn't, yeah, yeah. It was that unprofessional. He didn't even realise <laughs> there was like a stage or anything. He, I think it was maybe just they just moved the chairs and the tables back a wee bit. There was a sort of stage, if I remember rightly. There was a sort of stage we were on. But, uh, but aye, that was a random night. I can't remember where that was, but it was somewhere up somewhere north. Because I can remember it. it took ages to get there. Aye. And uh, I don't know how we got the gig, I don't know who got the gig, it certainly wasn't me because I wasn't phoning anybody or contacting nope. anyone. It and was, I think it was just one of those, you're still off on Friday, yeah, oh, we've got a gig and we're travelling up to, it was up near Apple, was it Montrose or somewhere? That's what it was. Aye, yeah, yeah, yeah. somewhere random. So after that, um, 
What other bands Just have you played? After TVK, I sang for Little Joe Crow for a week. Really? <laughs> sang okay. for a week. But then my lack of confidence. While I was playing quickly. bass. Do you know singing? I was singing. Just, just singing. Just singing. And then. I didn't think you were a singer. No, neither did I. And. <laughs> I think I was alright, but it was just my confidence. I was a bit like nah, confidence. I'm not a singer. There was nothing to hide behind. I couldn't hide behind a bass. It was just a microphone. And I was like, nah, not for me. But people just like give that man a bass. He doesn't I, know what to do with his hands. I, I, <laughs> 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 uh, and then that was me. I think until. But you you played bef- like we obviously have done a lot of recording uh-huh. together. But you were playing in another band because you've done a, a couple of music videos. Yeah, yeah. But so, uh, that was a wee bit more. Professional, but, yeah. that, but that was later on. I think that you were was later in on. your 30s. So, aye, so before that, though, there was a band. So, it was just as I was leaving when I got my redundancy, there was a band looking for a bass player, and they were in Glenrothes, and it was a metal band. And I thought that sounds like a laugh. So, I travelled to Glenrothes every Sunday to jam for three hours in this little dingy studio, Tin Pan, Tin Pan, Tin, tin Pan Alley Studios or something. Did you do gigs? We did one gig at Monty's in Dunfermline, and it was shit. <laughs> were you doing it, originals? Uh-huh. It was originals and we must have rehearsed for... And what would you mm, compete, like, was it just like the usual rock metal stuff? No, it was a bit more death metal, it was a band called Bodak. And it was a bit more death metal, no. nah, I don't think so. So there was me on bass, there was Stevie singing and guitar, and then there was a guy called Neil on drums. And we rehearsed for maybe nine months, and even after nine months it was a bit like... It was a bit like you were saying, you didn't know what other people were playing. And every week you'd go in and i think, right, I've got this nailed. And then he would be like, oh, I've changed it, now we're going to play this. And I was a bit like, oh, but I've just learned that. But and it was all over the place the next thing. And you know, right, we're playing next week at Monty's and we're going to play this gig. And I was a bit like, okay. So I played one gig and came off stage and just went, yeah, find yourself a new bass player, that's me, I'm done. And it, so you, what and was the other band? Because there was another band that you did the music videos for. Ah, uh, so that was Sire. So they, that was they an still on the go, I think. I don't know. I think they're kind of on hiatus they, at the moment. They did an album not too long ago, um, but I think they're on. They were kind of like pop hiatus. rock, aye, pop kind rock. of stuff. Aye, yeah, yeah. But they were a wee bit more professional. Aye, yeah. yeah. They certainly they, they sounded a bit. It was a bit you, more you polished. Know, and demos it? like the, the actual. Um, so the original songs it was like recorded properly. Aye, yeah, yeah. Music videos actually looked like music videos. Aye. And, it was um, properly done, yeah, yeah. And no, some of good. the gigs they were getting it was like it wasn't just like pub gigs, it was no, a no. wee bit kind of the next level Aye. up from that. So like the first gig we did would have been Oh Christ. Uh, it was almost like um, Classic Grand. We played the, the small stage at the Classic Grand was our first gig. Second gig was but it was almost like these side stages at like festival type things. Aye. We did like Or and More, we did um Party in the Park in Bathgate, we did one in was it Falkirk? Did you do the, the calendar park? No, no, we didn't do that one. No. Did we you did do behind the wall? We were almost played behind the wall support and Guns N' Roses support band, but that fell through at the last Guns minute. Guns Two Roses. That was, was that? them. That was them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we played the O2 ABC, the second stage in there, just before it burned down to the ground. That was my last gig. I didn't know there was a second stage. Yeah, there was just so you've got the kind of main one upstairs, yeah, yeah. the big wide room below that, the floor below. There's a smaller stage. Right. So played there, and that was my last gig with them. But yeah, we did a and why did three music videos. Were you just, was it not working? It was just the commitment. I didn't have the time to commit. I was Work, in college, family. I was going to have a job, I was about to have our second kid, and it just, mm. I, it, it, I wasn't the right fit for them at the time. I didn't have the time to commit and I wasn't feeling it. So but I loved it. It was, so it was the fun. lovely band dynamics. Aye, yeah, just the usual. So, uh, <laughs> but I know that was, that was probably the, the most positive experience I've ever had in a band was with Sayonara. Do you write uh, songs? Occasionally, but... Or do you just come up with riffs and... More riffs, some... Bits and pieces. Aye, I prefer just to... Because we've done a lot of recording, but it's usually just me writing stuff and then I, I get you into... Look at my to, magic to, whiteboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and just improv... Like, I'm quite happy for you to, to kind of just sort of try whatever and, <coughs> and do whatever. Probably need to try and get something where it's like more a collaboration rather than just... Aye, I've already yeah. got this song complete. Go and do whatever you I'm want. I'm quite happy doing that. <laughs> I'm a lazy yeah. bass player. Aye. But uh, do you like recording? I or, do. Or would, aye. Or what, do you prefer recording to playing live? Or is it. Oh, um, I prefer live. Yeah. You can't beat the, the feel of live. And, uh, aye. What, what, what do you like about. What's the things you like about a band and what drives you up the wall? 
about being in a band because I'm that I'm, I'm that <laughs> thing where even now I'm still like I want I want to get a band together I want to start a band mm-hmm. I want to play gigs cause, and you know that you're not the likelihood of making money or anything mm-hmm. from it is probably zero yep but there is something that's just great fun about Aye. playing with three or, three or four other guys. You all get it. You're all on the same page. It's you know if you're I've done enough practice, it's sounding good. Uh-huh. If you're comfortable with but it, it's the best feeling it's in the world. The isn't most it? annoying thing in the world at the same time. Aye. See, trying to find three or four guys that that aren't arseholes. There's always and somebody. Everybody gels. There's always ah, but there's always got somebody that just yeah, aye, somebody yeah. takes it. Too serious to the point that they take, there's no fun left in it. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody doesn't take it serious enough that I'm like, I'm not going out there and looking like a fool because you can't be bothered. Uh-huh. Um, and there's maybe it might be somebody's, you know, they're a nice person, but they're just not good enough. Ah, yeah, yeah. Ability wise, it's, it's difficult it trying to find so guys to jam I'll with. Name the band, and, and then you've also got. You know, if you've got work, if you've got a family, try and fit it in because it's really not a priority compared to other stuff. Yep, yep. It's so I'll not name the band, but one of the bands I was in, I remember we would go and rehearse for hours and hours, and it would be like we're going to rehearse the intro of this song for the next three hours, and that's what we would mm-hmm. do. And the songs were polished, they were great. We were ready for the live, we would go live, but three hours, you know, you do a sound check, you then got three or four hours to kill. So some of the band would go out and whoop, would go out and uh, get bevied up. Yeah. And then we would play the gig and it's not as polished. And then you're just back to square one the People next week at band practice. Aye. And stuff it's like, like that. right, that didn't sound as great as it could have been. So this week we're going to have to go back over this song or we're going to go back over that song. It's a bit like, well, maybe if you hadn't drank six, six mm. pints of lager before you and went you on stage. And you also get it, you kind of think, if if you were if you were seriously like we are trying to make it here, mm-hmm. you could understand. Be like, but we're going over this intro mm-hmm. for the next three hours. But if in your mind you're like, this is only ever going to be just a bit of fun. Aye, yeah. It's like, do I, I, really, do I really need to go over this intro? Aye. Uh, can you know just tell that person to stop what getting steaming before aye, they go on stage? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So know. aye. But do you like recording as well? I do, yeah. So I muck about it now. Our recording yeah. sessions are the shortest recording sessions ever. It's like <laughs> three hours and it's like, right, that's the entire demo done. It's like, cool people credit. would be shocked at how quick... Cool credit quickly. to the whiteboard though. The whiteboard has a lot to answer for it. So. <laughs> but um, see, going forward, are you quite happy just jamming the way you do it? Would you like to start a band? Would you Aye. like to do this, that, the next thing? I mean, I mean what, what did you kind of see yourself doing going forward so I mean I kind of fanny about in the house and kind of do bass covers mm-hmm. and I, I've got a YouTube channel that's maybe got like three videos on it and about 20 videos that are private and one subscriber just, and me. one subscriber that's you <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I like recording that and just playing along the bassless versions but I don't know I'd like to be in a cover band or something but again it's just having the time to kind of it's difficult once the kids are a wee bit older maybe I could do it but yeah, I and even original stuff, like, I love jamming with you and stuff. So. See how you're talking about like, um, playing gigs, mm-hmm. right? You obviously go to lots of like professional gigs, I don't know what you call them, professional gigs, aye. right? Like, real bands that are like, <laughs> actually bands, out aye, there aye, touring yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, yeah. making a living from it, right? Um, do you remember the first one you ever went to? And, and I, I get it, like the first one by yourself, not like your mum taking yeah, yeah. you to go and see the Bombles when you were five years old or that. Iron Maiden, 1995, the 5th of November at Glasgow Barrowland, the X Factor tour. See, I, was, I, I didn't go to that one, uh-huh. but in hindsight I always thought, why is a band that big playing such a small uh, venue? Yeah, yeah. But then, I think they purposely chose a smaller venue because they had a new singer Aye. at the time. Yep, that plays in. I think it was kind of like a and stepping the same, stone the, the next album him. was the same one, it was the Barrowlands again that they played, and then Bruce came was back. Was it good? Ah, it was amazing. I was who, front row who was their support? So, uh, uh, My Dying Bride, right. you know, this kind of northern kind of paradise lost style band. But that would have been cool because the bar is, is a great, it's great sounding, mm-hmm. but even if you're, it's not that big, so if you're at the back, you've uh-huh. still got a good view. Yeah, but no, I was front row. Centre. I mean, I think it Front holds, row stage. It holds about three Stage 000? left, front stage, aye, something, uh, like, something that. like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I was front row, stage left, right in front of Steve Harris, and I just remember the first... To what did they open with Man on the Edge? Was it Man on the Edge? Was that the X Factor album? The X Factor, so they opened with Man on the Edge. And then was it straight into Lord of the Flies? And it was probably halfway through the second song before and I got my jaw kind of. 
And it's Blaze that's singing for them. It was Blaze that was singing for them, aye. And when did you first see them with Bruce? Would have been 2000. Was it the Brave New World tour? Just before. Or the one they did. They'd done a tour before that, where he kind of. It was, no, it would have been part of the Brave New World. I didn't see that one, but I did see them down at Earl's Court in London. And that was with Bruce and Adrian back in it. And Mm -hmm. it was the beginning of the Brave New World tour. They They were just about to bring out Brave New World. Right, so you've been in loads and loads of live gigs. Have you got one that stands out as your favourite that is just better than... There's just one that's just like, that was just so much better than every other one I've been to. Mm-hmm. And is there any that, the opposite? <laughs> there any that you were like, you, you've turned up and you've seriously been extremely disappointed, like whether Some they played bad you know. or they sounded terrible or they just looked like they didn't want to be there? Some 41 were rubbish. Uh, I remember seeing them at the, uh, the old SECC. Uh, and I remember the Derek, the singer guitarist, and mm-hmm. the guitarist did the guitar off. And it was one of the few gigs that I'd been seated at. And just off, kind of behind the amps, you could see the two guitar techs playing the solos for them. And it was just a bit Aww, like, ah. That's a bit poor. So if you'd been in the crowd and you didn't see that, it would have looked awesome and it would have been cool. So but they just mind them? They were just mind their guitar solos. It was a bit like. Why would they do that? Uh, Shit. I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, that you, was, you hear of that though, but that was disappointing. Part of me is a bit like, is that just, does that actually happen? <coughs> but really uh, it does. Yeah. I suppose not because of the band, but one of the worst gigs I was ever at was ACDC on the Black Ice tour. So my mate had bought the oh, tickets. This one here? Yep. Yeah, 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 I was there. I was there as well. Uh, so when we bought the tickets, the plan was the stage was going to be at the goal end, so we got seats right here. And then they moved the stage onto that side and our seats, so if the front of the stage was there, our seats were here, so we were side on so the stage. So the only thing you got to see was the walkway. The walkway, it, and it Angus out came out on it twice and Brian came out on it once. And you couldn't even see the screens because the angle of screens were at. I hate to tell you, but I was dead centre. Oh. I saw them again. I saw I, them I, the next uh, tour after I, that. And you I know what? I did, it, was it was my uncle got me tickets uh-huh. for it. So it was me and him that went. Uh, I'm not a massive fan, uh-huh. but... In my head, I was like, so when was that? That was, um, what year was that? 2009? Nine, yeah. I thought they were at least 15 years, 15, 20 years past their prime. Aye. They were outstanding, though. Aye, they, were, they sounded them. amazing. The, the sound Don't get me wrong. <laughs> three quarters of the set list have been playing for 40 years. Uh-huh, so yeah, you, yeah. you should be pretty good at and it. tight, yeah. yeah. Um, but I obviously was dead centre. So it was like, you see all the, the big stage thing. Aye. But see, when you go to see a band, do you... What do you expect from a, a professional band? You, are you quite happy? Like some bands, like Iron Maiden, it's it's a stage show. It's not mm-hmm. just... Them. They don't come out on stage and play. They've, they've got the songs, but it, it's a whole... Like, just, you see it, mm-hmm. you hear it. It's like, it's everything. Uh-huh. There's other bands that will come out and they're just... Stand playing it, and they might be as good as the album version, almost to the point that they're just miming. Ah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, like, a, like I've, got, friend, like I've, that, I've got friends though that, like, they like, um, they're not like, they'll not be into the hard rock, but they'll, they'll talk about like, um, like Noel Gallagher, right? Now, when I, if I see him playing, you go, he sounds good, like, he, like mm-hmm. he sounds good. He's back in band, they're all spot on, they're all hitting the cues, mm-hmm. but they look like they would they wish they were anywhere but there. They Aye, look yeah, absolutely yeah. bored. And I don't know if that's part of the thing that they're just like, it's not cool to smile, look like you're enjoying Aye. yourself. But it's also that thing that it's like they stay on the on the one spot. It's mm-hmm. like you're not allowed to move, mm-hmm. you're not allowed to do anything, it's just stand and play these songs as it like they're hired guns. But he doesn't look like he's happy uh-huh. playing the, he probably is. I uh-huh. mean, yeah, I, I mean yeah. he, would, he would probably never admit it because it's not cool Aye, yeah. to say that. But that's the one thing like that I don't like about see like all your kind of indie stuff. And that, it's like there's plenty of bands that like I'm not an Oasis fan. They've got yeah. there's no denying that he, he wrote some great tunes uh-huh. or catchy tunes. I mean they're still getting sung thirty years later, mm-hmm. but. I always use Oasis as an example. They look bored. Aye, yeah. yeah. No, I like to see a band enjoy themselves. So, so do you, are you? Do you want to see 
pyro, something with pyros and all that, does that bother uh, you, or do does, you just want them, as long as the band, band to come out and absolutely just own the stage? As long as they look like they're enjoying themselves, I don't, I don't yeah. care. I, I, so I mean, going back, I couldn't pick one gig that is the best gig. I mean, maybe close would be that made in 2000 down at Earl's Court, because that was before, just as the internet was just on the cusp, internet banking and things were coming out. Mm -hmm. I remember going down to London, my mate Duncan, um, he drove from Edinburgh all the way down to London and up in a day, oh, it was mental, the amount of Red Bull that guy drank, I don't know how <laughs> we got back in one piece, but we got down there and I remember being at the merch queue, it was the last gig I can remember being at where you had people sprinkling holy water and praying for your soul going through the door, it was amazing, it was like, you know, you're about to see Iron Maiden and, and then I was a bit like, this is a bit mental, like, why are they, why are they, why are they doing that? I've been to Maiden gigs before, they've never done it, and then going into the merch queue and I'm just a bit like, Slayer t-shirts, mate, why is there Slayer t-shirts up there? And he's like, they're the support band. And I was like, fuck, really? yes. Aye, so Slayer support, you made I didn't, think, I didn't know that. And, it was, and Entombed as well, do you remember Entombed yeah, from yeah. them? Yeah, yeah. So they were the support bands and it was just, so I think it was because it was, I mean, although I'm a massive Maiden fan, I think Slayer is the band I've seen the most. And they're a band that just, they come on, they grip it, they rip it and they fuck off. There's no bullshit. I think the last time I saw them, the retirement tour, <laughs> Yeah. There was pyro, and that's probably the first time I can remember seeing them with pyro or any some any kind of show. Yeah. The rest of the time, it's just like they come on, they thrash it, and then they, they bugger off backstage, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. So that was a good one. Slipknot's first gig at the Barrowlands. That was. I think I was there with you. Ah, yeah, you would have been. Uh, Pantera. Pantera, yeah. I saw them. Somewhere. And I saw them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Two thousand. That would have yeah. been. Yeah. And then I saw them at Ozfest '98. I wasn't at, eh, I yeah, eh, no, I wasn't, but I did see them on that tour, but again, that was at London. Was that one there as well? Yep, so I saw that one. I, did, uh, I saw them uh, down in London at the Astoria before it got knocked down. Right. Me and my mate took the sleeper train down and up, and yeah, they one? were supported by System of a Down, and we just thought, that was, no, that was, that before was filmed for... It wasn't Headbangers Ball, it was, was like... Was it Noisy Mothers or noisy something? Noisy Mothers. Ah, yeah, because I think I yeah, saw yeah. Crusher there as well. So I did were, see them on that System too. of a Down were just this new band ah, coming yeah, yeah. in. I don't even know if their first album had even been uh, out It yet. hadn't been. We just remember, I remember standing in the bar with my mate Neil, and then they had it on the screens at the bar, and you could see the stage, and they were just... And Slayer played as well, actually. It was, so it was their first UK gig with Derek Green, after Max had left, and Slayer were playing. So it was Sepultura. So Slayer were headlining head? Sepultura, right, okay. and then you had System of a Down. I remember being in the bar, and we were just like... Who are those idiots with the silver face paint and body paint and we didn't bother yeah. it's like one of those shit we should have been there were so, you at that one uh, i would have been at that one absolutely and you would have obviously been at that one would have been yep but um that was probably my, one of my favorite gigs was that the black tour so that was before no no that was the load tour oh was that load right so this, do you remember they, re they released a dvd uh -huh. Called Cunning Stunts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was that, that tour. tour. Right, Obviously, okay. that was filmed in America somewhere. Uh -huh. But it was the exact same stage set up. Uh -huh. And that was me and Martin Miller, right? Now, uh -huh. we, we had got he'd got seating tickets. So it was obviously like the, the stage is in the middle. Mm -hmm. Crowds round about. You've got an actual barrier with um, security. You had, you've got to get your wristband to uh, get yeah. through. And then obviously, everybody else is on the seating bits. So we are sitting there in the seating bits and they're like, I think we were like 16 at the time. We were just like, this is rubbish. We want, we want, I want to go down no, there. No, 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 and, uh, no I, and uh, I had another friend who was a, a slightly older than us who had, uh, he was there with his friends. Kind of, like They were a couple of years older, older than us at school, but we kind of knew them. Mm -hmm. and they were in the standing bit and they were like, they'd seen us. Like, come down, come down. Mm -hmm. And it was that bit where it was like at the barrier and there's obviously like the security's watching you. And he's like, just jump, jump the barrier and <coughs> run the And you know what? We, we both jumped the barrier, <laughs> ran into the crowd, and the security guy probably was like, I have car, I'm not chasing after ah, him. Yeah, yeah. We ended up on the front barrier. Brilliant. And it, that was back when the band would come down and, and they'd be playing and you'd, uh -huh. you'd be, have your arm around them. Ah, and be yeah. like, ah. <laughs> I was like loving it. And, uh, awesome. But that was like, there was the two stages with like the walkways between it and... You know, it was like a whole stage with like uh -huh. pyros and like light yeah, yeah. rigs falling down. And Newstead would have been playing bass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've only ever seen Metallica with Rob. And that was one of my biggest regrets. So uh, that was cool. Uh, I'm trying to think. So I've seen, so I had tickets to see them on the load tour at the Barrowlands. Yep. And I couldn't go because I had an exam the next morning. I was told I wasn't allowed to go and I did as I was told. Mm -hmm. I had tickets to go and see them at Big Day Out down at Milton Keynes. I've seen them at the Glasgow Green. Uh-huh, right, yeah, yeah. 
uh, was it that one? I missed that one and I missed the other one. And so the first time I saw Metallica was 2006 at Download. Went down, did the full weekend. That was so. so that was 10 years after 10 years, I'd seen aye, it. 10 years. Yeah. Uh, and it was when they played uh, Kill 'em All. Right. And it's in, no Kill 'em All, uh, Master of Puppets. Ah, right, okay. They played that back to back. Right. Uh, that was a great weekend. Who else headlined? I think Guns N' Roses headlined the Sunday night. They were rubbish. It was more Axel and Friends at that point. Yeah, but there's some good bands. Love I think most of well. these, the rock ones, you've probably been to. Uh, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like Machine Head, they always used to come just about every year. It's always they December go, time. For it was some always reason. December, and the week before would always be Fear Factory. Yeah, and they always had one one minute silence supporting them. Aye, yeah. Whatever happened to them? Eh? Uh, Although I think the drummer's in jail. He got done for growing and dealing. So things. that would have been your first gig there. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. That was it. Yeah. yeah. And that would have been. That was the random one, was that not the one up? Oh no, sorry. Yeah, yeah that was the first gig. first one, and that was the one up in Montrose. Was it? I think it was I T-Break. Was Cat House. It might have been Cat House then. No, it was T-Break, no, I thought T-Break was. Alright, oh, okay. No. That's maybe just my memory, I'm old, remember. Right. But yeah, I've probably been to quite a few of these ones. Have you got any gigs coming up? For uh, next year, like, yeah, like yeah. the professional ones? Judas Priest with the next one. Right. Going to see Bruce Dickinson in May. And then we need to go and see Made in Scotland yeah. up in... Right, I'll, I'll so we are, there's nothing planned yet, but I'm sure we will have more recordings <laughs> yep. in 2024. Last question, right, before you go. Mount Rushmore, who is your top for musicians or bands that are just like, everything they do is just outstanding. They are the, they are the top of... Maiden. Of the heap. Maiden, top of the pile. Yep. Equal setting with Metallica. Yep. You gonna spring any like crazy uh, ones that I'm uh, that's gonna shock me like Abba <laughs> or something? Well, I can't tell you a story. So Metalhead since I was five, six years old. Uh-huh. Uh, shared a room with my brother. I had half the room, he had half the room. My half was like wall, ceiling, wall, room, the window, yeah. covered in posters and little clippings and made in Is your brother Metallica. younger or older? He's younger, he's right, two okay. years younger, but a year and a half, two years younger than me. Was a metalhead for a, a minute and then he discovered was it bonkers, remember they? No. Rap, dance CDs, he got in all that pitch. Uh, anyway, so my half of the room was covered and made in his room, his side was kind of Ninja Turtles or something, and he eventually got into M- Maiden and that, and then the whole room was covered in like Maiden, Metallica, Megadeth, Sepultura, kind of random stuff. And then Kylie Minogue released I Should Be So Lucky, and I got rid of all my Maiden stuff, all my Maiden posters, and I was Walter Wall Kylie. So that was that the song, or was that more about how she looked? <sighs> well, see, the thing is, I was what. <laughs> Well, when would that have been? Eight, 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 nine. So I would have been what ten. So it could now. I don't think it would have yeah. actually looked maybe. But yeah, I remember getting the album and the watch and the posters and the clock and everything for Christmas. So I don't think I'd put them on my. No, I was I'm going to do some recording later in the year. I've changed my mind. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Right. So Mount Rushmore. We've got. We've got Maiden up there. Maiden Metallica. We've got Metallica. Who else? Who? Just that. You know, like these guys are just. Or girls are just brilliant. Oh, uh, Metallica Slayer. I'm going to put up really? there. Aye, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, again, they just, there was no BS with them. I mean, that, there was a dodgy stage where they came out with Ditto Head and things like that, but. I think for they the did most a covers part, album? They did, aye, yeah, yep. aye. Uh, oh, Christ, is it just made the Metallica? There's got to be more than that. Anthrax. Yeah. I would put Anthrax up there. Okay. Aye. Uh, I didn't I expect like, a couple uh, of them. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anthrax, no, I would. Yeah. But see, since you're the total rocker, total metalhead, uh-huh. just for everybody, right? There must be a pop song out there that you like that you're like. I'm embarrassed <laughs> to admit this, but I like listen. I like it. I the melody's remember. great or something. Go on, tell me. There must be one. You know it is. I, I can't remember the name of it, but there's a Taylor Swift one I'm learning on bass. Uh, oh. My daughter would kill me. I can't remember the name of it, but aye, it's quite catchy and I've started playing on the bass. And, so I'm, go- I'm going to see her this year as well. <laughs> are, you pre- are you dragging the kids along pretending no, that it's there for I, them? I am being dragged. It was one of those. Got her the ticket, she'd answer, she's going to see her. Oh shit, it's VIP, I can't transfer them at the way. So. I think I've got Beth wanting to go to see her first. Whenever Metallica next comes. Right, yeah. You'd be tearing my eyes. Oh. I'm so proud, I'm proud, Dad. Oh. <laughs> right, Gav. Right, Thanks for doing this. No worries, no worries. And, uh, I'm surprised we managed to find shit to talk about for the last. That's fine. <laughs>